Hello everyone and welcome to an unboxing and review video done by me today. I am, as my Twitter handle would state, O1Berserker, also known as Dalton if you've ever tuned into the D Dice and Dummies podcast. Also, by the way, check us out on iTunes and Google Play. Please subscribe and also leave us a review. We always love hearing reviews and if you have any questions, definitely post them as well. If you, if you have any ideas for some NPCs in the game, character, even special creatures, background name all you need to do is send it to me on twitter or send it to our group or send it in a review for goodness sake to our podcast uh, we'll take it into consideration add them in we always love having more content from our viewers love having you guys get involved that way um so today we have two pieces here for my orders two of them i'm per merged into one to make it a little simpler on you guys for unboxing purposes um these are all done online so there was ebay and miniature market being the source of this this one came from a comic shop that sold it on ebay I uh, can't remember the exact name of the shop, but it was sold originally for $24.99, so I got a deal on it. And it is the Icons of the Realms Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica Companion Starter Set 1. Overview here of the characters. Very awesome group. Um, thought I would get them because uh, they have that new player race, in, the two new player races in it. And yes, I did cut this so I could already easily just slide this out so my life would be simple. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> so first up, give me one second here. Okay, so we're going to go down the list here um, by number. First up, for 46 out of the 55 in the set, the Minotaur Fighter. Very awesome sculpt here. Definitely have no qualms with how he turned out. Like his horns there, nice... Emblem based on the whole Magic's new uh, guild set that they're doing now out there. Nice uh, mace-like style with the sun on it. Special headpiece, nice adornment. Nice uh, PC character or NPC that you meet in the game. I know they did keep giving, or continued to give them the Gord Horn style attack, which I thought was cool. Uh, very nice mini, and I was always glad to get these on special PC characters, because you never know when you need them. Uh, next up, we have 47 out of 55, the Elf Druid. Give me a quick little thing there, so I'm not lying. <laughs> um, I like the skull on top of the staff there. It gives it more of a death feel, but yet, you know, the root from the staff going into it. Like, you know, life and death sort of merged. He's got great sculpt here. Very interesting design for a druid. And he's got that interesting neck piece. It is uncertain if it is a he or a she. I have not been able to find out which. But, you know, it could be a good ambiguous character if you want one. To, if you want your female to look like this or your male to look like this, you know. Covers both sides. I feel it wouldn't have an issue being uh, either gender. Very simple sculpt, but very great at the same time. Next up, we have one I really like for a wizard base. It is the Human Wizard. Number 48 out of 55. Really like how she is done. Nice little hair there. She's also got this nice staff that's a very interesting silvered staff with a two-prong on it. Kind of reflects back my light that I'm shooting here. Anyway, very nice mini. I love the uh, canister on her back with an arm attached and like hose up there, as you can see, to the hand, where she could be using a special suction magic to suck in any type of special ingredients or even an enemy such as a spirit. Maybe she's uh, sucking in some type of monster's remains, like or even a spirit. Maybe she's sucking in the soul of a defeated enemy, sort of like a soul trap, you know, type deal. But, you know, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I know I kind of just pulled Ghostbusters there, but anyway... <laughs> Um, yeah, pretty cool creature um, character for the game. I mean, all everything is a creature. Remember that. So if anyone ever says it, your character is a creature. Some people get irritated about that, but I think it's just funny to say. Um, very nice sculpt. A little intricate there in the clothing there, so I like how they did that to make a simple character like that. And next up, we have the big old Loxodon, the other bad boy I ordered this for. The 49 out of 55 Loxodon Cleric. I really like how he came out. He's got that nice eye patch, as you can see there on his face. Very nice, very nice. Um, nice sculpt. He's got the nice symbol on his stomach there. He actually does have a belt, so you know he actually does, you know, hide his shame. He's got the elephant feet, but he's got those nice hands. He's got a big old war hammer there, which is cool. Uh, some battle fight, obviously, with Broken Tusk there. Nice back cloak, you know, stuff like that. He's very well detailed, very well detailed PC to NPC. Very cool. So maybe in the future I might use this guy as a character. You never know. And then final of the group, we have the human rogue. She is very simple in her design, but obviously a female. Very nice. So if anyone in your group needs a female cleric, you know, she'd be a nice uh, filler and also a nice representative for her on the board. 
Very nice, very nice. Um, it's sort of a little unusual why they did such a simplistic job with this rogue. They could have given her a little bit more detail, in my opinion, like maybe a little bit more like knives belting there, sticking out, you know, something to give her a little bit more detailage. But, you know, they'll do what they do. And as I said, 50 out of 55. So, like I said, a nice big 55 set, which is good. So maybe they're going back up. Yes, I just threw that out of my way. It was in the way. Um, so now we're going to go to my miniature market and other eBay orders. Um, before we get down to it, I love how miniature market sends these cards with their stuff. These uh, old D and D base cards, very useful for these older monsters that you don't really have in the monster manual, but you can easily kind of give them stuff. For instance, the Blazing Fighter here, Lawful Evil, a Male Outsider. You know, gives them like a speed stat, some AC, some head. Obviously, you can change it to match it more of a fair fight for your future characters, but you know. Helps uh, give you some stats for them if you want to use them in the new stuff without making it too weird or too homebrewed without, without ruining that game. You don't want to ruin it and make your characters hate you. <laughs> Regardless of you are DM, you were basically God to them. We have this one here. This is the Ledev Guardian. For once a mini that actually has it correctly aimed for the front of the mini's face. Surprisingly. 29 out of 55. Very awesome female mini. And as if you've watched any of my videos from the older days of me unboxing, yes, I do already have her, but I think it's really awesome to have a second. I just love her sculpt with this elven female riding on the back of a giant winter wolf with some armor on him, making him even more aggressive. Like winter wolves themselves are aggressive with their cone, with their uh, breath of coldness and stuff. Now he's partially armored, makes him even more terrifying to run into for a party. And maybe there's, since now I have two, maybe a they block the gate, one on each side of the door, and they basically stop you dead in your tracks by freezing you or halting you. Uh, next up, we have this right here. Before you say, yes, he is a troglodyte, not a lizard, but you could use him for either or. But he is a cleric of Leog Leogzid. He was 43 out of 60 of his set. He was a chaotic evil. They actually put that in the bottom of the base there, surprisingly. A uh, very nice sculpt for him. Very simple. He has his white front with a green back. That's why I feel he could be used as a lizard folk cleric if you had to. Very nice mini. Um, obviously, not a ton of clothing to him. So, as a troglodyte, has that stench stuff. He has a card as well. So, you know, that's the great thing is if I want to make him an enemy character, I have his card. And if I just want to, you know, go however I want to do this. Um, anyway, moving on to the next miniature here. We actually have the half-orc executioner. Now, obviously, it's hard to tell it is an orc at all. The po little bit pointish to the ears, the only kind of giveaway. Maybe the slightly paler skin, but yeah. Very nice half-orc. The weapon could be bended, so I'm not worried about a bendager because I can always bend them back if I need to. You know, luckily, they just a little hot wa really boil Some boiling water will do that for me. Uh, anyway, nice sculpt. He'd probably be wearing a highest medium armor if you had to ever give him armor. Uh... Bit of a Dominator style thing with the mask on and all that. He's pretty cool looking. It makes his eyes pop from a distance. Um, he was a 36 out of 60. Lawful evil. And that is because, you know, he is lawfully killing people that need to die. But it's still technically evil of him. And he's trained in how to kill people quickly. So that's why he's evil. Another up here, we have the tro another troglodyte. And the only other troglodyte in the set I ordered. This is the Bone Crusher troglodyte. Very aggressive base mini. Um... You know, got kind of that baseball style stance. But he's got this huge club. Obviously a great club if you're going to throw it. needs both hands. He's very big. Not super armored, but, you know, he's got some pieces on him. Little uh, stubby tail there to show he is reptilian. Um, got a bit of an interesting sculpt face to him. That slightly thicker underjaw there to give him that little bit underbite you require to maybe prove he's a troglodyte. Another creature, if I remember from his card, he does have stench and stuff like that, just like everyone else. Very cool mini. Um... Very simple, but still always very cool. It's always good to have a monster like this on the side you can throw out to throw people off. Maybe he's even an NPC. You got to help him like, I don't know, what would a troglodyte need? Uh, help me get back my smelly rock collection. I mean, they are stupid. So I don't know. Um, next up, we have another awesome one that came into stock and had to snag her when I had the chance. The Blackwoods Dryad. So cool. It's basically like Predator of the Dryads. She's got that cool face mask with the green eyes. Nice raperture around her appendages. The interesting little hair piece there, like her hair. Very cool mini. Honestly, I can make so many uses. She doesn't have to be like in the Black Woods, though she is the Black Woods Dryad. But, you know, she was 34 out of 60. Chaotic good. 
I really do love with older minis like that, they actually put the chaotic or lawful on the bottom to help a person, like, realize what they should do. I believe they're female. I'm not 100% certain if this dryad's unisex or not, but, you know, cool mini all the same. Very awesome sculpt style. Like I said, I love those green eyes. They pop just so much on this dark body. Helps kind of seal the fact that it is a dryad and somewhere inside it is elemental energy of nature. Very awesome mini. Cannot at all say it was a shame to buy her. Um, another one here is another Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, so the new set, the Windrake. Very simple, uh, very common. This is now my third Windrake I now own. Different wing position, though, from the other ones, slightly different. Uh, the head is a pretty straight on, though, so a little bit similar to the other one. It is, as we see here, 6 to out of 55. And as we see, 2018 Wizards of the Coast, just for reference. I like the flight base on it, these little clear pieces here, because they're nice and thick. A little thicker than those just plain sticks they put on there. I know a lot of people think those are actually very cool. I actually am not a big fan of this, just plain sticks. They do it with dragon stuff, which I guess they can get away with, but, you know, I prefer that. It gives more detail to the flight part aspect of it. Uh, right here, we have the white. And, I mean, simply, it is just called the white. <laughs> these are basically smart zombies. Uh, these zombies are more intelligent. Um, they can wear armor, carry weapons, do all that kind of stuff. As well as this one is carrying a head. I thought it was a firewall based on the picture they sent. But actually, I like the idea of him carrying a head. It's a lot cooler and meaner. Nice sword aspect. Nice sculpt for the armor. Very simple, but yet cool for his design. Helps boost the fact he's an undead soldier. So, very cool mini. Uh, you could always have him be like the servant to a wizard. Even a lich would probably definitely want these guys as servants. With their slight intelligence. Leads the zombie and skeletal armies. Um, you know. Helps even be a good spy for him. Maybe he's going to say, hey, I walked through town, luckily, and a little bit of disguise, like you hid my whiter appearance, and the people didn't recognize me, thank goodness. Um, I found out their adventure was coming this way to kill you. So, you know, be on the watch out, my master. Don't let them at all kill you. So, you know, there's always that possibility. <laughs> there we go, little camera adjustment. Anyway, very awesome. I like the dark eyes there. They give a little bit of aspect to his face. So, you know, pops from a distance. I really, like I said, do love him carrying the head. Makes him look super aggressive. Obviously, whites probably won't be a player character normally in your game, but you never know. Some people might. Next up, we have the Torturer. And one actually quick thing for the white here. I forgot he was 21 out of 45 for his set. I don't remember what set he came from. I don't remember all of them. I should have written them down. Did not. My apologies. But yeah, we have this guy here, the Torturer. He also had a card, so he's old enough that he's from the series that had cards. Very cool guy, big old muscular, kind of a little bit chunky guy, but still muscular nonetheless, with his very black leather pants. I swear some of the old minis, I don't know how they have these very black leather pants, like, you know, kind of like the gothic guys of the old days. And he's got that nice uh, torturing whip with the nice metal piece in the end to tear away flesh from bone. His eyes pop so much due to his mask, which I really like. They pop slightly more than the execution because it's a full black mask. He's got the big old apron, similar more to like a blacksmith. So, I mean, if you had to, you could support him in for a blacksmith. They call it executioner blacksmithing or the executioner smithery or torturer smithery, something like that. I mean, you know, if you had to, weirdly enough. But yeah, he's a great torturer. You could have him be an NBC. Maybe he's lost his favorite whip and a bunch of gnolls stole it to torture their prey. But he wants it back so he can get back to his torturing because maybe it was a whip given to him by his master who taught him in the arts of torture and murder. But yeah, he's a bad guy. He's also lawful evil. He does his job for his ruler. 45 out of 60, and that's why he's lawful, though, because uh, he doesn't just torture everyone. He tortures the people he's, you know, commissioned to torture, not just, like, every single thing that moves. Next up here, we actually have the Bladeling. You saw his card earlier. Very goblinish looking big guy here with all these spikes and metal pieces. He is considered an outsider. Now, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I might as well do research into that, but he's got that nice, really ugly, crackly looking blade. Lots of spikes, some armor, and a knife here on his side. Got a weird metallic based, like, kilt. I guess would be the right term. He's got some, like, shoulder knee pads. He's got those creepy clawed feet. I mean, obviously, he's not fast. He's only got a 30 speed according to his card, so. He's about as fast as any of your daily regular characters. But, you know, he has this cool, like, uh, I mean, the ponytail's a little weird. I don't know why he's got that. But the Spiker Champion had that, and she's from the same thing as him, apparently. She was a outsider as well. Um, so right here on the bottom, Lawful Evil, 28 out of 72, the Bladeling Fighter. He was from 2004. Very nice sculpt, very good bad guy. I mean, he could represent a demon or something like that, but, you know, very cool dude nonetheless. Uh, moving on, we now have the Dark Talon Champion. 
a very awesome lizard folk. Then as a matter of fact, I already ordered one of these before, but I decided to order a second one because you know what? You can never have too many good lizard folk warriors and fighters. He could be a PC character, honestly, maybe a barbarian based lizard folk. Uh, he does have an ability in his card that gives him like friend, a uh, reptilian bump. So when he's next to a reptilian ally within five feet of him, he actually gets a boost. So if they're in the square adjacent to him, he gets a boost up in power and stuff. So, you know, pretty cool stuff. And with him having barbarian stats on top, he'd probably be very aggressive, very dangerous to a simple, like, low-level party, especially. Or even a high-level party if he's a really bumped-up monster, make him, like, a top-tier guard. Obviously, not much clothing. He's one of those more lizard folk that was more about them being aggressive more than them having clothes and being more civilized. I like the flat tail on it. Gives him a little aspect. Nice frill here to give him a little bit of, like, a hairish appearance. Looks very aggressive. Very cool. Definitely glad to get a second of him. And <laughs> screw that playling. He didn't deserve to be here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, next up we have another Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica the Rubble Belt Stalker now yes I did get this one in my brick opening if you remember from my older videos definitely check them out too and like I said check out our podcast um, I really do like his design though a lot he is a more clothed lizard so he'd be more of a PC character maybe a rogue character maybe you could even keep the blade tail as a thing if you talk to your DM kind of work it in there that he has a blade tail which could be a bonus attack or bonus action with a quick slash like his tail flicks up, stabs you, cuts you. Maybe it's got a venom on it because it has like a little bit of greenish tint to it, as you can see. Maybe it's got like a poison aspect. Sorry, it went over the camera. Got the nice little skull horns on his head there to help give him a thing. He's got some little punch knuckles. Got a quick dagger there, probably more like a cutting dagger. So instead of piercing, you'd probably give him a cut. Got even some little foot wraps there. Very cool mini. Uh, not at all disappointed to have a second of him, just like the dark champion here. Very nice again, but let's do them quick for a quick reference change. Show the difference between the two different lizard folk. That's the white. Why did I grab the white? There we go. Put them like this here to help show off their details and the light hits them. And look at the differences in these guys. Look at their differences. Like so much more detail over the years. But yeah, it's still similar class. Just these are guys are a lot brighter. Well, these guys are a little bit more darker and a little bit thicker. So you know, very cool minis. Definitely awesome to add to the lizard army. Anyway. Moving on here. If I can get them out of here, and they're, not, they're all basically telling me to heck with you. Here we are. Uh, this is the Crocodile Mini. This is a mini I wanted from Waterdeep, and I never got it. So I ordered him from Miniature Market. Very cool. I love animal-style minis. You always need more animals. 30 out of 44. He is from the second to newest series, which was Waterdeep. Never got the Beholder from that series or any of the, like, Griffin Cavalry. I did get the bear. I got two bears from that. I also got Lion from it. I got the uh, uh, Shield Guardian, some cool stuff like that. I did get the two Dragonborns out of it, so I was really happy to get them because I always love getting more Dragonborns. They are so useful for my for my campaign in the future of our party. Once we're done with our per, our current DM's whole entire long campaign, I will be doing probably the next campaign because I have plans for it, and uh, they're going to be important. But anyway, uh, very awesome Crocodile, very nicely detailed. Look at those scales on the back. Look at the detailing there. Even in his teeth have some nice detail. Just such a cool mini. Even though he's just a crocodile, very cool. Very cool, very worth it. I know a lot of people like to just buy the uh, toys and just put bases on them or something like that, but I'm actually not a giant fan of doing that, to be honest. I just I don't feel the authenticity of it. It's not the WizKids ba brand or a Reaper brand or something I'm used to using. Um, over here, we have the Guard Drake. Obviously, I do have the other Guard Drake from the Tyranny of Dragons, Guard Drake, number 40. 8 out of 60. A cool dinosaurian style guard drake. I really did like him. He was the last one in stock. I'm glad I could snag him when I did. Very awesome. He could represent a small, di a medium-sized dinosaur, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, you can always never use enough drakes because in D&D, &D, they're supposed to be just as common as like wolves and stuff like that because the world is more magically inclined. So I like his little crest there. He is from, I think, the same exact style of generation as that crested drake mini i also have from this and another older mini surprisingly he was actually the cheaper of the two but he's just harder to come by very popular amongst people i mean his little bit bendy which i'm always like worried about but still very awesome mini definitely glad to add him to the group another reptilian style creature i always love having more drakes and stuff and speaking of drakes we're gonna bring out my dragon spawn this is the blue spawn ambusher very cool mini there he's got that little jawline right around here Right next to where my finger is there, see that, like, the white little line around his mouth. He's got a little bit of an underbite, but, you know, 
Got the big old horn like a blue dragon has, showing that he is from the DNA of Blue Dragon Altered. I did have to clean this mini with an electric cleaner. It looked really good after he came out, though. Nice, nothing left from that. Nice blue detail. Very cool mini. Little piercing eyes. Uh, surprisingly, as his card shows, he does have the ability to generate an electrical field, just like other spawns. While the Storm Lizard actually shoots a blade, a bolt of lightning, this guy actually makes an electrical field. So I think it's a, uh, if I remember correctly off the card, I don't feel like pulling it out. It's, I think, a 10-foot radius around him. So basically a giant 10-foot square round. He can create an electric, like, 10 feet in all directions. He can make a, or a 10-foot cube. He actually creates, basically, an electrical field. He basically pulls a thunderbolt, like, from Pikachu or Discharge. And uh, very awesome. He's basically the dragon spawn of Pikachu. <sighs> Very awesome mini. He's a medium, which surprised me. So he could technically be a good pouncer of your character. He could pounce on you. Thunder, like electric shock you and any party members try to save you. Start biting and grappling you while you're possibly paralyzed by the electricity. That's an effect I'm going to definitely make sure all my electrical creatures have because that stuff does affect your muscles. Get a little shot here what we got so far. Nice big set. Next up, we have the Carnage Demon. I've always wanted one of him. I want to see what he looked like. And honestly, I'm not too disappointed. He's got like that gorilla-ish stance here. Big old mighty arms, these big claws, big feet with bigger claws, big muscly body. You know, he's got this uh, very reddish tone, like blood tone almost, which I find very useful for him being a demon. Nice big aggressive teeth and skull head. Just a nice, really nice mini in general. I'm actually glad to get him. Another one that wasn't in stock very often. Lately, Miniature Mark had a giant boom in stock, or what's in stock, so definitely check him out. Um, I have almost all the dragon spawns, by the way, so his little friends here. I'm missing the Fire Belcher and the Green Zealot, so at some point I might have to snag them, too. But very cool mini. Very cool. Uh, he actually is similar to the Dark Thorn in the way that his more allies of his kind are there, the more powerful he gets. So the more Carnage Demons you actually have on the board, the more powerful they will become being adjacent to each other. So if they have a mob your party, they will definitely become a way increasing their challenge rating and definitely giving them a good serious fight. Um, so next up, we're going to go with one of the ones I ordered from eBay. Still from the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. As you see in my brick, I did not get all the ones I wanted. I specifically said which two I missed. This is one of them. The Krasis Large. I really wanted this big reptile bad boy. I thought he was a cool mini. He still is a cool mini. Got a nice armor mitt here. I mean, it's a green armor, so it kind of blends in, which isn't too bad either. So, you know, he could be like a pet for a city, like a giant guard beast or something. Or maybe he, like, uh, guards the dump where he lives. Or he could be, like, a moat guardian. Like, maybe they guard the moats and make sure no one gets in. Like, very cool monster. Anyway, I mean, like, they're very awesome to have. I have no issue getting him. Like, you know, there's always any issues. Like I said, I can always bend it out of him. Like, he's got this cool curved tail. So, maybe he's a whip tail. And he's got this nice goiter, like, on the bottom there of his neck. Or a throat pouch, similar to, like, a frog or a toad would have. But his obviously expands pretty big there. Maybe he spews an acid or a gunk. That's very disgusting. Maybe it makes your character's AC drop. Or it causes them to start having fumbliness. So everything they do is a disadvantage. All attacks, all movements. Even spell casting can be a disadvantage. Because maybe their positions for a hand spell, gestures they have to pull up, slide over or slide, go too far, don't look just right. Or maybe because the slime blocks it. Maybe it has like a magical blocking slime. I do like a little pull here for balance. I mean, I think his feet are attached. But it's nice that he has this pull in the center for an extra set of balance. So, you know, three points of uh, hold on his base. I'm surprised he's a large. He is 27 out of 55. Definitely was glad to snag this bad boy. Cheaper than it would have been to buy him separately or like that from the any of the game shops around here. Um, not that I'm ripping on them, but, you know, he has this really big mouth. Now, if you have noticed, his mouth goes from here all the way back to here. Like, that's his whole mouth. That's the whole mouth line. Now, if I had this big boy attacker group, I would definitely give him the ability to snag and swallow a team member of medium or smaller size. Because uh, this giant mouth pouch there, where I feel is where they would get stuck. They'd get crushed up inside there a little bit, maybe down the throat. And he would start burning them with acid or some type of thing like that. Like his acidic uh, saliva with a venom effect. Maybe he's venomous. You know, there's tons of stuff to add to lizards like this. So many cool things. And then, like, you know, the character every turn has to fight. But every time it's his turn and the player's turn, he gets burned with an acid damage. Or if you really want to be a jerk, give him a necrotic acid damage every single turn. So everyone's turn. So that would help your group basically seriously focus on trying to bust him out or your character friend is going to be dead. 
<laughs> and this guy could be a flare killer in his size. I mean, he's obviously going to be stronger than many characters. A little bit spindly in the arms, apartment body, but, you know, the neck and head just, they give this nice, like, effect to him. I like his white underbelly. Kind of gives that gecko feel. Reminds me of those geckos you have when you're a kid, you know. And then you stop getting them when you're older because they escape and run away. <laughs> anyway, back to the mini. But, yeah, very great. I like his armor detail. Even though it is green, it blends. But you know what? It works in a way because it helps like make it so he could be a wild animal. Maybe escapes from his masters and became a wild savage. I just love this like throw pouch. It makes me think so many things. Like maybe if you kill him inside there, there could be some uh, armor pieces from a guy that didn't dissolve. Maybe he only dissolves like organic material. So any weapons or stuff that come out of his stomach, guts, or his uh, mouth pouch there will just pour out from his dead body. Like, Your party searches through, finds a special sword that may be magical or something like that. Or maybe he made something magical. Maybe something soaked in his um, bile for so long, it became like a sword of necrotic acidic damage. Um, next up, we are getting close to the end here. We are on the last two. This is the Fiendish Dire Wolverine. And honestly, my light is giving him a very awesome coloration that I don't see on the mini without it. It's making his spikes there more purpley and his face a little bit more aggressive. Actually, no, his face looks all right, but the purple is more addition to the spine. It's cool. I might give him a cleanup later. Maybe there's some dirt there that's like making him not look as good as when there's no light on him. But gosh, just such a beautiful sculpt. I really love these dire beasts. And I don't know why you don't see them in 5e that much. Like they'd rather just call things like giants, but you can use dire creatures to represent them. But I'd rather have dire stuff because a regular wolverine is strong enough to stare, square it off against bears and stuff and wolves. Plus, like, you know, even mountain lion stuff. They're able to do that. So what could a dire being a large? Like, let's look at him next to a medium character. We're going to use this white. Like, imagine this. This guy has enough power to tackle and rip apart this white. And the white would have basically nothing to complain about. It would happen. Even if you put him up against a crocodile. Being a mammalian, he's going to be more fat. He's going to have a more acrobatical movement and such than this crocodile is going to. And also be a very big bruiser. So he could probably even take down this crocodile without any regard. But I mean, let's compare him to, like, say, the bigger of the mediums. A bone crusher. Still gonna kill him like he's still gonna rip him apart with that aggressive dire wolverine face now is he fiendish in the fact of like that he is demonic i don't think that but wolverines are a hyper aggressive and hyper strong carnivore very powerful just most dire animals are carnivores so i know some people say oh what if they're omnivorous well you could make them that way but i feel with this big old sticking out canine stuff he's definitely a hyper carnivore like a lot of dire beasts um yeah I like the like sail ridge across his back and spokes spikes out the eyebrows help bolster his eyes and his teeth. Let's see here. He is number 54 out of 60, the fiendish dire wolverine from 2005. He was chaotic evil. They're of course being evil because I don't feel he'd be dire as fiendish is in the idea of being demonic, but he's still a great mini. I'm honestly glad I got him. I finally got around to saying, you know what? We're going to buy him. They never had too many of him in stock. So I said, I'm going to snag him before he's gone because who knows when they'll have another big bolster renewal. Um, another one here. This is the last one I ordered from eBay. Uh, this is the Death Pact Angel. I did not get her in my Ravnica brick I opened, and I really don't want to take the risk of trying to open until I get her. I don't know if she's a large class of the mini, but compared to the crisis, she could be. But I just wanted to get her with the awesome scythe there. It is a little warped. I'll have to fix that. But honestly, the rest of her mini is solid plastic, so very hard. These wings are a little hard. A little bit bendy, but still hard. This, she's got this nice ornament on the back of her neck. Very, actually, impressively, a very beautiful mini. If this was the Grim Reaper coming to take my soul, I wouldn't argue with her that much. <laughs> Pretty good looking. <laughs> very nice design, nice gold in there. Helps give that regal, angelical feel, which she has with those big wings, of course. But you don't see many good angel minis out there like this that just have such a presence. She could stand in for death, too, if you need death in your game. Show her base here. Death Pact Angel, 25 out of 55. Super excited I got her. I just love this scythe. I may have to do a little bit of bending to it to straighten it out. But you know what? Just such a beautiful mini sculpt. I mean, so beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to get a shot of everyone here. Move them all around and get a good shot here. Try to sprawl them out. Base them. Spread them out a little bit. Give me a second here. There. Nice overview here. Yeah. The greatness of these minis. I mean, this is a great set here. Even those cards in the back are very useful. Just such a great set of minis. I'm honestly not disappointed in any purchasing any of these bad boys. 
But, you know, I love the PC characters. I love the Dragonoid characters. I love Reptilians in general. I love beasts like that Dire Wolverine there. Definitely Hyloid is the Dire Wolf or Dire Wolverine. We got the Death Pack. This green spawn's a definite big bonus. We got the Locks on here. Love getting him because he's cool. I like Drakes. They're cool. I mean, I didn't need him, but, you know, nice. We got the Minotaur. Got a cool Execution Torturer. Cool Carnage. You know, I love this Guard Drake here. Older mini that still has its pizzazz to now. Another Lead of Guard, and especially the big Krasis there. I do love that I got him. So great. I mean, honestly, all these guys are something I love to get. They're all something I want. I definitely am so thankful for this one. I'm so thankful I got this one and no complications. Just so grateful. Yeah, I know I got to keep touching it. <laughs> I just can't help myself, man. It's just so beautiful. Anyway, um, this is all I got today for my most recent haul. If I get any more D and D based hauls, if I ever get like maybe the guys are having a book, which I do plan to do at some point, maybe I'll do a review on the book. Um, so anyway, tune in next time. And if you want to visit me on Twitter and follow me on Twitter to see any other stuff I post, definitely check it out. I also post miniatures I paint myself and other stuff like that. And I also do like posts on our podcast for the Dice and Dummies. Don't forget us. Check us out in the iTunes and Google Play. Subscribe. Give us a review. Send us ideas you may have or any questions you got. We'll definitely read them out loud on our record on our um, recording nights and answer them with the whole party there is giving their perspective. Each person giving a perspective. Um, and if you need a reminder, I am at O One Berserker, and uh, we are the Dice and Dummies. And my character, I am Bardis. Played by me, Dolan. And so um, check us out. And keep your eyes open for any more videos I post on YouTube. By the way, if you are a follower of mine on Twitter, you do get to see these guys live. The videos are slightly different from the ones on Twitter. They're a little bit shorter. And uh, they do come out first. I always do my Twitter followers ones first. As a love to all my followers, I give them the first digs to see what I got before the YouTubers. So if you want to start seeing what I got first before the, everyone else as much as possible. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, bye bye and enjoy the great miniatures and stuff of D&D. Bye bye, says the great Bardis.